Well, my father was Lebanese and my grandfather was Lebanese. And I was dying to hear that somebody here can speak Arabic or from the old country. It was sitting in these newspapers <laughs> with uh, funny writing, which as a child we didn't understand. Crossing between languages of Middle Eastern culture to Australian landscape. I'm an Australian. Uh, my great-grandfather uh, arrived uh, sometime at the uh, end of the um, 19th century from uh, Batroun in Lebanon. Uh, he uh, came, uh, set up a, a local business, went back and brought his wife and small child, who was my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather uh, grew up uh, in South Australia. His father died young. Uh, he then married a, a nice uh, lady called Minnie Eblen and produced uh, my father, who married uh, into uh, uh, an Irish Catholic family uh, and produced myself and uh, my brother and my sister. So I have a Lebanese heritage of which I'm proud, Lebanon being one of the uh, great centres of civilization. It's a rich and wonderful heritage. Uh, it served me very well uh, as I have made my way in South Australia, firstly as a uh, medical practitioner and latterly as the head of the Australian Craniofacial Unit. Uh, I spend my life fixing uh, deformed faces of children and adults as well. Um, I've set up a system that uh, is Australia-wide and extends its uh, uh, efforts uh, internationally and I'm currently the president of the International Society of Craniofacial Surgeons. Uh, my somewhat uh, international background um, uh, has enabled me to deal with uh, this uh, activity on the world stage uh, uh, much better than had I not uh, uh, had such a diversified and interesting heritage. Okay. The Australian Craniofacial Unit, were, of which I'm head and I was the founder, uh, was established in 1975. Uh, it uh, was set up by the then Premier Don Dunstan to serve the people of South Australia. Uh, to serve the whole of Australia and to extend its activities into Southeast Asia. You need one of these units to about 20 million people and it needs to be multidisciplinary, that is uh, have a lot of cooperation between specialists and be focused upon uh, the, uh, the sick children. Uh, some of these children need to be managed for the whole of their lifetime uh, so we need to be able to have an organisation that can serve them over that period of time. Uh, this organisation uh, has become very well known nationally and internationally. It has trained many surgeons throughout the world uh, and it has uh, certainly been a leader in setting standards uh, for this sort of health care. Uh, I have recently become president of the International Society uh, and have been instrumental in founding an Australasian Society and a Southeast Asian Society. We can proudly say that our Australian craniofacial unit centred here in Adelaide is one of the best in the world. Well, I was born at Maylands uh, in South Australia, but at the age of one, my family took over a hotel at a little place called Kalangadu, which is in the southeast near Mount Gambia, and I spent my early childhood in that town. I attended school there until um, I'd finished my primary education and then uh, came to Adelaide. Yes, my parents spoke Arabic continuously because that was the language that they knew uh, so well. Um, I was very keen on football when I was at college, in fact. That was my favourite sport and I was fortunate enough to, enough to represent the college in intercollegiate matches against St Peter's College and um, when I left uh, Prince Alfred College and went to the Adelaide University I was lucky enough to play in the A-grade side of the university so I always had a, a real strong desire uh, to play football and, uh, and when I finished playing um, I became involved in the administration of football with the South Australian Amateur League and from there I, I was appointed in 1962 to be chairman of the Football League Commissioners um, in South Australia, so that's how it all started. Mm. If anyone had told me that uh, 
I'd become the president of the league in 1978 and hold that position for 25 years, I'd have thought they were stark staring mad. In fact, I think I was a bit mad myself to continue for so long. We always encouraged uh, our two girls um, to use our home as their home, to invite their friends and uh, uh, acquaintances to our home, which was always an open house, which is what the Lebanese custom is, that uh, your home should be an open house to your children and their friends, and, um, and that certainly was a strong part of, uh, uh, of my uh, direction to the children, and uh, they always did that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a very happy childhood. We had a wide extended family with my father and um, mother's families representing quite divergent cultures, Dad's family being first or second generation Lebanese. My grandfather came out here in the 1890s and I can remember the first time I took Kibbe and, and Metwist to uh, school and this was treated with great suspicion and disdain until people decided that they could taste it and, uh, uh, and then I had great difficulty retaining my lunch because people would want to swap. Um, so I grew up in that aspect where um, helping other people was a part of life and I suppose that may have influenced me to do medicine and um, I um, went into general practice after completing uh, the medical course and then um, went into rural general practice in Port Augusta and small towns like Bulleroo Centre. I was then asked to join an AMA general practice committee and that led to the branch council and that led to the national organisation of, well actually the national organisation of GPs came before branch council and then branch council, branch presidency um, and for 13 years I was on the AMA federal council. Well, my father was Lebanese and my grandfather was Lebanese. And um, in those days, um, there were very few migrants in Australia. I suppose the most remarkable thing I can always remember about Lebanon, which has stayed with me forever, was the food. Now, that sounds a bit shallow, but uh, um, we used to eat differently every weekend when we used to go to my grandfather's place. And uh, that's where I got introduced to all the beautiful Lebanese food, which I've loved for the rest of my life and it's very strange when you hear people talk about it now as if it's part of our normal uh, uh, daily cuisine whereas in those days if uh, you had Lebanese food on you for instance if I went to school with something that was Lebanese people looked at you as, as if you were a bit strange and it was in a, in a sense quite embarrassing but uh, yeah it was a different world then Australia was a different place um, uh, there was really no multiculturalism at all remarkable thing about Lebanese people that I've noticed and that I've experienced is their incredible generosity uh, and kindness and I'm, I'm not just saying that but for instance even if a Lebanese person hated you they would never not have you in their house and they would never not entertain you lavishly and and I find their generosity is is just something that uh, I value immensely I don't like mean people uh, and I like to think I'm a generous person and uh, Lebanese generosity is something that uh, I've always valued and I think that's their greatest asset. My grandfather came over from Lebanon back I think in the 1880s, um, moved to Adelaide. His son went back to Lebanon with his mother, uh, got married back in Lebanon so came out again um, and indeed my father's older sister was born in Lebanon and seeing my grandfather who would, I remember him sitting at the end of a, um, a long bench, um, he's a big man, his English wasn't that flash, but he would sit reading these newspapers <laughs> with uh, funny writing, which as a child we didn't understand. My father is um, very into background, and, and he's spoken um, about it, and very, I mean, all Lebanese are very family oriented, and um, I, as, I, as I said before, I don't know if my orientation towards family being important is Lebanese, <laughs> or simply um, that that's what um, our family is. Other people I know that are Lebanese, I know a couple of lawyers, um, are also very family oriented mm. as well. So I must, because I've assumed that that is um, uh, part of that background. He's always talked about it, uh, talked about his background, and whenever you know he sees somebody that he hasn't seen for donkey years that is Lebanese, this obviously seems to be a connection. Now I do major trials. I did Snowtown, 
Um, as the prosecutor, I do major appeal work, and because of my position, I'm involved in the broader criminal justice um, system, have an influence, hopefully, uh, there at least a contribution in how things work. Um, so most of my time spent in court, and um, and it's obviously very interesting and challenging work. Um, I was appointed Silk in 1998, which for me was uh, was a significant achievement, and obviously as a barrister, it's something that you regard very highly. I came to Australia with my parents in 1925. It was a very happy life. We, we mixed all the Lebanese families. There was no differentiation between uh, religion or anything like that. It was all, um, everybody was everybody else's brother. We visited each other's houses. We called people that are not, in, not at all related to us. We called them uncle, even though they were, might have been a Maronite, a Christian, or Muslim, or whatever. The Lebanese community in South Australia was a very strong community, if not in number, but at least in spirit. There's been a lot of achievement by the Lebanese in South Australia. First of all, thank on my behalf and my behalf of my um, brother and father Paul, uh, the Australian, South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs Commission, who gave us the chance to give our impression and our, uh, our feeling what we have uh, here in South Australia. I would like uh, to thank them and uh, to say that uh, even uh, if I got only three years here, but I have very good experience uh, about uh, the communities. I say communities because uh, uh, these communities, I consider them as families who live and who share uh, their life with each other. I came here to serve the Maronite community six years ago. Uh, all uh, our functions uh, are with the presence of the main part of the Lebanese community in all his uh, its faith. It means uh, Orthodox, Melkite, Druze, Muslim, we are always together. We cannot be Lebanese if we don't love Australia, and we cannot be with Australian if we don't love Lebanon. Here it is a, a union between love, patriotism, and uh, uh, society, and spirituality. Through this, through this context, we try to serve our community. I am very friend as Father Nicholas and Father Andreas are with the Druze community, with the Muslim community. I say always to Sheikh Sleiman, you are Sheikh, I am priest, we are brother. You have a brother priest. <laughs> this is our life. We can, we would like you to know, and we ask you also to take this mission for, to all our families, and especially to Australia. We love Australia as much as we love Lebanon. We are not Lebanese in Australia. We are Australian Lebanese. Please, we, I focus always on this. The beginning of the migrant of the Muslim Lebanese community that comes onto Adelaide started, as I know, in the 50s, 1950s. And it was only about few families they came. One of them is the Baroudi family. One of them is Hamdi Baroudi, and then the Bosmati families, because they used to mix and with the other um, uh, families as 
the uh, families of the uh, Druze community and the Christian community. They used to be together and then they used to go together and then live together. In 84, 85, we start the, uh, the, society, the, uh, the school. And that school is called, we call it the Ethnic School of Arabic Language. Of course, this ethnic school of Arabic language, because there was no any other school, so it was open to every person. I came over to Australia in 1951 as a student, and uh, I stayed in the university for three months. Actually, I was boarding with someone, and he was a, a young man from Singapore who was studying at the university too, and one day, we were talking, he said, are you Lebanese or uh, you said, what about Syrian? And I was dying to hear that somebody here can speak Arabic or from the old country. So next day uh, I went over there and uh, it was uh, Al Marhoum uh, Najib Najjar, Cecil Najjar they, uh, they used to call him. Uh, he had a barber shop in the central market there and uh, I said, well, uh, I'm Lebanese. He said, Yahrak Dinak, you are Lebanese? Well, I haven't seen you before. He said, where do you come from? Syria. He said, yeah. He said, what part of Syria? He said, uh, Beit Mary. I said, well, that's Lebanon, uncle. He said, I don't know. When I came over here, it was Syria. <laughs> now, what happened? I don't know. Most of my work now goes uh, with the Iraqi refugees, because they are new here, and uh, I try to help them with the, their uh, language difficulties. My father arrived in Australia in 1927, and we followed him in 1930. We arrived, my sister and, and my mother, arrived here first week in January 1930. And, uh, we developed uh, 100 acres of olives, peaches and oranges uh, outside of Remark. And uh, a challenge came up. My father used to say to me, what are you going to do with all this stuff? So that's how I got involved in the cooperative movement. And I became uh, a director of the dry fruit packing company, and I was the leader of the Growers Association that set up Riverland Cannery, and then I set up uh, Berry Fruit Juices, and eventually from there <coughs> set up Rip Sam, which was the major exporting company for citrus from Australia. And I think possibly I was at the right place at the right time, and uh, I chaired these four or five companies for many, many years, even having a joint venture in uh, Japan where I chaired a company for 10 years. In Malaysia, I was a director of a joint Malaysian government company for some eight years. And uh, I finally decided to retire in 1981 when I, had, I thought it was about time to do something for my children instead of working for everybody else. And, um, I came down to Adelaide and we set up DWN, which was uh, David, William and Neil, uh, my two sons and I, and, um, and thankfully it's still going. We nominated these 38 different people to come to Australia and every one of them has made us very proud. And uh, to think it's so hard now for these young people to come here is a little disappointing. I think amazement of so many, with only some 20 families, we bought the first Drew's house in North Adelaide and uh, finished up building the first Drew's Hall. And I think it is the first in the world before even the Drew's had their own Drew's Community Hall in Lebanon. We left Lebanon back in 1933 and we got an Italian boat from Port Said and we were on the boat for about five weeks. My dad came out here before us in 1930 he worked hard and saved a few dollars or pounds at those days and sent over for us. And mother brought us off from Lebanon. And on the boat, we couldn't speak Italian and they couldn't speak Arabic, so it was a hell of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> One day I can remember vaguely, not vaguely, I can remember very, very well that Mum was on the deck praying and built in the chest there.